joining us on Beat Digest. My name is Francesca. Now, back in the 90s, living in a mining town was exciting because the Zambia Consolidated Copper Mine, ZCCM, would ensure that its employees and communities in which the mines operated were properly taken care of and managed very well. However, the story is not the same for Kankoyo Township, situated in Mufulira District on the Copperbelt province of Zambia. This township has over the years been adversely affected by mining operations from the locally run mine in Mufulira. The details in this documentary highlight the mining operation effects on Kankoyo Township. Mufulira is one of the mining towns on the Copper Belt province of the Republic of Zambia. The town is richly blessed with minerals which are mined from the local Mufulira mine. Mufulira mine is one of the country's giant mines known for its copper production. The mine is currently run by Mopani Copper Mines MCM of Glencoe. Mining operations at this giant mining firm has affected nearby communities, especially Kankoyo Township. This is Kankoyo Township in Mufulira District. The township is located on the downwind side of Mopani Copper Mines Smelter. For many years, Kankoyo Township has suffered from air and water pollution, alleged to be emissions of mining operations by Mopani Copper Mines. Magingambi is a resident of Kankoyo Township and she has lived in the area for over 15 years. Mrs. Ngambi has over the years experienced mining emission side effects that have caused her harm on her health. I have lived at this house for 15 years and what has been happening in the last 15 years is that in the first year I suffered from asthma and I was admitted to the hospital. Since that time my health has not been stable because of the sulfur dioxide emissions. Those that are saying sulfur emissions have stopped coming out from the mines are lying because even today it was released. The way my voice sounds like today is not the way it was before. It's because of the sulfur emissions. We are really having a hard time with the sulfur dioxide emissions. Even now, my health is not okay. I get sick most of the time because of the emissions. Our lifespan is being reduced by the intake of the emissions. So we are appealing to those that are saying there are no sulfur emissions here. The sulfur emissions are being released here. Even as I'm speaking now, the sulfur emissions are coming. Other residents have the same complaint over the sulfur dioxide emissions from the mining firm. This problem has not started today. Even during the PF regime, the problem of asthma illnesses was there. So many people have died. The problem of asthma illnesses can even be confirmed at the local clinic. I can't even say much. If you just want to get the facts on how people complain over this problem, go at the local clinic. We bury asthma patients nearly every day here. But the mine is saying there are no sulfur emissions. How? Uh, here in Kankoyo, as a result of mining activities, we have been suffering a lot. Here, each and every time we experience the issue of sulfur dioxide, which uh, the mine has been increasing. Like recently, we received the president here, he came. Now, after that day, we experienced a lot of uh, tombs came out from the mine. Even yesterday, around 20 hours, we experienced the same thing. Uh, this simply means that uh, this environment is not conducive for human life. For example, if you talk of uh, most of the diseases that you have been suffering from, each and every time we complain chest pain, uh, we complain the issue of coughing, the issue of uh, sneezing, flu, such things. And if you want to 
verify or if you think that uh, what I'm saying is not correct, you can go and uh, find out from KMK3 there, our green. The effects of air and water pollution in Tankoyo include the degradation of roofing sheets, wall plaster, and paint on infrastructure. This church, enter the land of Canaan Ministries, is about 100 meters away from the local mine. And Gilbert Chishiba, resident pastor at this church, explains the challenges faced by the congregants owing to the degradation of roofing sheets. Problem, I'm a roofing sheets because of, in, especially in rain season. The biggest problem we have is that of degraded roofing sheets, especially in the rain season. So in the rain season, it's a big problem. We have so a lot of congregants in church, so and when the people, rains come, I mean, people have to move side. to one side of the church. So it's a problem. So it's a problem. Every, year. Every year we yeah, complain about, about the roof. Geoffrey Zimba is the project coordinator at the church. At this church, we installed new roofing sheets in the year 2005. From that time, Nearly every year, we tell our members to contribute money for roofing sheets. So we have even lost our members because they cannot manage to be making contributions every year, especially that nowadays it is difficult to sort for money. I am the coordinator here, and when I tell the congregants that roofing sheets are now expensive and we need more money at least to buy IT4 type of roofing sheets instead of the 0.2, it can help. When we use the 0.2 type of roofing sheets, by rain season next year, they will all be degraded. And again, we have to go back to our members asking for more money. As a result, most of our members have stopped coming to church. And the sulfur emissions are too much. Because if there were no sulfur emissions, our roofing sheets could not be destroyed. Even when we are praying here, sometimes we are attacked by the sulfur dioxide emissions from the mines, and some of our members collapse. Some of our members are afraid to come to church when they are not feeling well, worrying that they will get worse when they are here. So we have lost most of our members because of these challenges. And because of the underground operations that include blasting at the mine, most houses in Kankoyo have big cracks. Cases of collapsed houses have been recorded in this area several times. I'm only asking the government to build me a house, then I'll have peace. I have dispersed some of my children because the house is collapsing. Our children now sleep in the kitchen instead of their bedroom, even though I have extended my house. Air and water pollution are not the only challenges that have been caused by the mining activities in this area. According to Musaka Laban and Joseph Mulenga, soil too has been polluted and has had a toll on vegetation in Kankoya. This environment is not conducive for human life. This is what we mean. Here, yeah, this is where the, the, the mayor and the group came and planted different uh, trees alongside this road. But are you able to see any tree from me? The answer is no. Because this place it is what? Contaminated. They planted, yes. And I know that a lot of money was spent over this project. But are we able to see any tree which has come out from this side? No. So I want the government to take this into consideration. If the plants that were planted alongside this road, 
uh, uh, we are not able to see them. Now, what of us human beings? Do we have a uh, meaningful health? The answer is no. So this reason why we are appealing to the government to take this into consideration for the people of Kankoyo. Yes, we came with numbers and demanded change, and we are able to say that we have changed the government. And also, we want also things to change in our respective community as Kankoyo. Ukukwena when it comes to the issue of gardening, it's worse. If you go around our community, our soil is polluted. As we depend on vegetables that come from the far farms that are near the DRC Congo, if those people don't bring us vegetables, then we are doomed. We don't have anywhere to plant, even tomatoes or chili. Here, only mango and avocado trees grow. Now we can't even plant bananas because of the polluted soil. Green and Justice is a civil society organization, CSO, in Mfulero District that has been advocating for the relocation of the people of Kankoya. Executive Director Christopher Nkata is aware of the effects residents of Kankoyo are facing, hence steadfast on the relocation agenda. We understand that uh, the mines have been there since 1985 to date. But looking at the state of affairs in which we have seen that the land is bare, the housing structures are being affected, and also looking at the status of the community, the land environment itself, we suspect even the health, health of the people living out there, they are affected. So with regard to what we have just been working on as an organization, uh, we, we have done a survey on two occasions just to ascertain or maybe to get the facts of how best maybe we can get to a conclusion after this survey. The first survey which was initiated by the former vice president, by then was Mr. Guy Scott, which we had on board with, um, worked with uh, um, Zambia Environmental Management Agents also on board from the Ministry of Mines under uh, Inspectorate team. Also on board was the Mufuda Municipal Council Planning Department. Um, in conclusion, after the survey, we had come up with a report which we sent to the office of the Vice President. And the conclusion was the area was not fit for human habitation. Having worked on such areas, and we have seen that at least People should get uh, uh, the benefits of being exposed to bad environment. And uh, of course, uh, since then, we haven't seen much more work or much more efforts coming from the government as the correspondence which we have been doing with the Office of the Vice President exposed clearly that the area is not fit for human habitation. So as an organization, uh, we are still fighting for the same thing, uh, for the same rights of the human beings who are staying there, that they should be looked into. Their plights are supposed to be addressed. It's either by government or the mines. Many governments have come and gone, and promises have been made. Local authorities in Fulira still give hope to the residents of Kankoyo that the settlement will be made better soon. Promises indeed, but are they empty rhetoric or political? Uh, our roofs are not okay. Even the, the, the soil itself is not okay. We are looking at the environmental impact. In fact, a lot of studies have been done there. We are just trying to follow up issues here and there to see how best we can do it. You know, there have been a lot of uh, promises for the people of Kankoyo. 
and uh, I think it's high time that uh, we looked at that. It's one thing that we we are looking at. Even to, when you look at um, Bangkok in general, it requires a lot of things. Apart from that, I think the Rogan, I'm able to tell you that we're also looking at tree planting, restoring the vegetation. I think as you've been UPN government, these are the things that we are looking at. Restoring, I think, what has been lost in, in Kankoyo. Because when you look at the emissions at the moment, they are not the way they used to be. If you compare what used to happen, get the meeting in the atmosphere by then, it was a lot. But this time, we are looking at uh, a few parts per million. And this parts per million, I'm sure, at an average, you may not get maybe more than uh, 20 ppm. So with that 20 ppm, we yeah, are likely to, uh, to tell people that uh, we have to restore that. But for now, as you are saying, for the part of government under the leadership of His Excellency Mr. Hakai Deche, we are there and you'll be able to see us move. It is one area where we want to do a lot of things so that we restore, I think, the, the environment in the Kankoy. And to say a disaster is looming in Kankoyo Township is not an exaggeration at all. And the question still stands, when will fate reach this township? For now, these residents in this rich but forgotten copper mining township will have to endure pollution caused by the mine which has over the years paid a blind eye to the community in which it operates. One question that beckons an answer is, what happened to corporate social responsibility in the mining towns such as Mufulira and others? The alleged emissions from the copper smelting and sulfuric acid production plants at Mufulira Copper Mines are among the major sources of air pollution in Kankoyo Township. Residents in that area are optimistic that government will give a positive response to their plight. What do you think of this documentary? Do give us your feedback at documentaries at damontvzambia.com or alternatively drop us an inbox right on our Facebook page Damon TV Zambia and we'll be glad to hear from you. From me, Francesca Piribanda, thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed. <laughs>